Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I have all of my mini bags to share with you. So I'll be showing you 13 bags and I'm gonna be ranking them for you in order from most used to least used. So I'm not gonna be going into full details about each bag just because we would probably be here for a long period of time. Please let me know if there's any bags that you'd like me to do a more in-depth review on. I'd be happy to do that. But what I'm gonna do today is I'm going to show you the bag, I'm gonna give you the price, I'm gonna give you the biggest pro and con about the bag, in my opinion, and then I'm gonna be doing mod shots as well. But I wanted to mention quickly that I recently posted a get to know me video and you guys have left me some of the most amazing comments and messages, just so supportive. I felt so much love from it and I just really wanted to thank you so much. So if you're interested in learning a little bit more about my mini bag collection, keep watching. But if you're new to my channel, hi, my name is Anne. I make weekly fashion and lifestyle videos and I would love for you to consider subscribing down below. Okay guys, let's get into it. Okay, so I wanted to start off really quickly by saying that I'm not gonna be including any walled on chains in this video, mainly because I recently did a walled on chain comparison video and I featured all three versions of walled on chains that I had in that video. So I will link that down below in the description box if you wanna take a look at that. I'm also going to be excluding some bags that I just didn't think were that mini, I guess. Some bags that may be the smallest of the line, like for instance, the Louis Vuitton Speedy B25. It's technically the smallest of the Speedies, but it's just, it's just not that mini. It holds so much and it's a little bit bigger than all the other bags. So bags like that, I won't be including. Okay, so let's start off with the mini bag that I'm currently wearing the most. Starting off, my current most used bag is my Louis Vuitton Palm Springs Mini. And if you've watched my video recently on my most used bags of 2019, you'll know that this was number one. So this is no surprise. I absolutely love this bag. This retails in the United States for $1,940. Unfortunately, I just looked on Louis Vuitton's website and it's sold out, which is no surprise. It's always sold out, which is really unfortunate because it's such, such a good bag. I absolutely love it. I think one of the biggest pros that I love about this bag is just how much it fits. It's so deceiving. You can get so much in this bag. It's great. And another thing that I love about this bag is just that you can wear it in multiple ways. I love it when you can wear a bag crossbody, but then you can also wear it in a different way, like a backpack in this case. And that's just what makes this bag so great. One con about this bag is definitely the zipper. Now I know the newer versions of this bag have an exposed zipper where this has this canvas lip over it so it makes it a lot harder to open and close. So that is one of the cons of this bag. But even if this was the newer version with the exposed zipper, I think one of the biggest cons of it would be this zipper down here is pretty hard to open as well. And to be honest, what can fit in here is very, very little. I never use this front pocket. I almost feel like it's just kind of for a design feature, but even so not being able to use this little pocket in the front, I still absolutely love this bag and I wear it all the time. Okay, next up is my Chanel rectangular mini in the black caviar with the light gold hardware. This bag is stunning, stunning. I love this combination. I think it's so beautiful in the light gold champagne hardware. I also love it, of course, in the silver and the gold, but this is just, to me, perfection, just because it's a little something in between. It really does go with everything. The hardware kind of is a little bit of a chameleon, so it kind of, if you're wearing a lot of gold, it can kind of look more gold, and if you're wearing all silver, it can kind of swing that way too. So I absolutely love this bag. And this retails in the United States for $3,500. I believe that's right. Correct me down below if that's wrong. I know there was a recent price increase, but I'm pretty sure it was $3,500. So, but let me know if you know different. I think the biggest pro about this bag is definitely that it is just a shrunken down classic flap. They don't call it a classic flap, of course, because it doesn't have the double flap and it's also not part of the classic collection anymore. It only comes out seasonally. And if you can get a hold of it actually from retail, you get an amazing deal because 3,500 is so much better than the next step up for the medium large or the small size flap. Those are just so expensive. The problem of course is this bag is in such high demand and there's always wait lists and you can't always guarantee whether or not you can get it in caviar versus lambskin or the color of the hardware because that might depend just on the season, what's being released that season. So if you can buy this in store, if you have a sales associate that you have a good relationship with and you can get on a wait list and you can actually buy this from the Chanel boutique, this is a great, great price for a Chanel bag with all of the classic details. One negative about this bag is also the price. 
Although that is a great price for a Chanel bag, especially a small Chanel bag that has all of the features of a classic Chanel flap, it's still a lot of money. $3,500 is so much money. And unfortunately, there's a good likelihood that you won't be able to buy this in the boutique. So then you're looking online and you're looking at resellers and they really do jack the price up on this bag so, so much just because it is in such demand and it's a supply and demand thing. So, so many people want it. There's not much availability. So the price goes up. So I think that the price of this bag can both be a pro if you can get it in the boutique and also a con, of course. This is a beautiful bag. It's one of my favorite bags in my collection, but it definitely, definitely is expensive. Okay, so next up is a fairly new bag to me and that is my mini Givenchy Antigona in the faux crocodile. I love this bag. I did a video recently comparing this mini bag versus the same bag in size small in the smooth leather. So I'll link that down below too if you're interested. But I have been wearing this bag nonstop. I've been wearing this so, so much. I think the texture on it with a croc is gorgeous. Just gorgeous. And this retails in the United States for $1,990. And I have just been using this bag to death lately. I really have. I've been using it all the time. I haven't had the problem that I did with my red mini Antigona, which was the straps falling off. Um, but I'm still very wary of that because I know it can happen. And I've heard from a few other people who have left me comments that they have also had that issue. So that is probably the biggest con for me. Just the fact that you have to worry at all about the straps falling off, that just really shouldn't be a thing. I would really hope that Givenchy would address that, especially since this bag has been around for a while and there have been different versions of it. Um, for instance, when it first was launched, the strap was not removable at all, now it is. So just things like that. I wish they would have taken that into consideration. I think one pro about this bag is definitely capacity. This bag can fit a ton in it. It is technically a mini bag, but it fits so, so much in this thing. At first glance, you might think that it's shaped kind of like the Alma BB, and it is. It's shaped a little bit like it, but it's so much bigger, and it fits so much more in it. So definitely, definitely capacity is a big, big pro for this bag. Okay, next up is my Saint Laurent Mini Lou camera bag. And if you've been watching my channel, you know how much I love this bag. I think it's great. I think it's so, so cute. And I love that it can be worn with so many different things. I think that the gold hardware really dresses it up in case you wanna wear it a little bit more dressy, but it looks great also with a t-shirt and jeans. And I have been loving this bag, especially to run errands. It's just such an easy grab and go bag. And this retails in the United States for $1,050. So one pro that I love about this bag is definitely the durability of it. This leather is pretty much indestructible. I've talked about it before. I have two videos on this bag and I'll link those below as well but this leather is just indestructible. I think I mentioned in a recent video that one time I got my friend's um, daughter's candy bar stuck to the bottom of my bag and I was able to just like take it off and wipe it clean and it was totally fine. But this bag is so durable. The leather on it is fabulous. That's definitely the biggest pro, I think. I think one con about this bag is it is a very small bag, so you do have to downsize quite a bit in it. I don't have a problem with it because I wear mostly mini bags in general, so I'm already used to downsizing a lot. And I have a smaller iPhone. I have a regular iPhone, so not an iPhone Plus. So my phone fits in here perfectly, very easily. And it fits in the back pocket here super easy, which I love. But if the bag was a little bit bigger, then it would allow for different types of phones to fit in easily, and it would allow different phones to sit in the back easily. So I, I wish they had made it just a little bit bigger, but I still love this bag. All right, next up is my Pauline number one mini bag, and I, I recently picked this up in Paris um, when I was there with my mom in the fall and I have been loving this bag. This bag is so cute. I think that the color is beautiful. I love that it's camel and it's two-toned. So it really kind of does go with everything. I think it looks beautiful with the gold hardware here. And this bag is such a, such a good deal. This is $350 for this bag. And I am so glad that I picked it up when I was in Paris. I think one pro about this bag is honestly the price. The price on this is crazy. For a French brand, you know, all leather bag, I definitely would say that this is just as good quality as all of my other luxury bags. I would say one con about this bag is that when you have it seated 
it does have feet on it, but when you have it seated down, it might lean forward a little bit, just depending on how you have your items arranged inside. So you might be thinking, oh my gosh, it might fall over, and it might from time to time. It hasn't fallen over too much for me on the table, it just kind of tilts forward, and I don't know, that might bother you, so I wanted to point it out. Okay, next up is another Chanel Mini, and this is my vintage Chanel Mini, and this is in the square model with the black caviar leather and the silver hardware. And I wanted to get an older model of the Square Mini for a few different reasons. And one reason is because the older Square Mini is a little bit larger than the current Square Mini. You can also tell that the bottom of the flap here with the CC sits a little bit higher, like in the center of the bag, of the Square bag, instead of further down. The newer bags, the flap will come all the way down here. Lastly, one thing that I love about the older Chanel Square Minis is that the chain length is longer on this. So you probably know that the current Chanel Mini straps are actually pretty short in comparison to the Rectangle Minis. The Rectangle Minis strap is quite long, it's very generous strap drop and you can wear it crossbody no problem. The current Square Minis that Chanel puts out are a lot shorter in strap drop. So for a lot of people, it's hard to wear crossbody. It either sits too high, you might not feel comfortable with it. So a lot of people will just wear that mini just over one shoulder. What's great about the vintage Square Minis is that the strap drop is a lot longer and you can wear it crossbody, no problem. I have no problem wearing this crossbody. I actually sought out a vintage Square Mini just so that I could wear it crossbody. I knew myself and I knew that if I got the bag, I would would probably want to wear it crossbody and I might be frustrated when I realize that I can't. So I decided to just look for a vintage model so that I know that I could have that option if I wanted it. And I believe the Chanel Square Mini currently retails in the United States for $3,200. And one pro about this bag, again, is that this is so much less expensive than the classic flaps. You basically get most of the details of a classic flap just shrunken down and with a smaller price tag. So. Lots of good things about this Square Mini. There's a couple of cons about this bag. One definitely is it's hard to get a hold of, especially new, obviously. Same reasons in the boutique, they just sell out super quick. They're usually a little bit easier to get than the rectangle minis, but not too much. Another con about this bag is if you were to buy this brand new, not a vintage one, the strap drop would be shorter and it would be harder to wear crossbody. But again, I don't have that problem with this one. Another thing that bothers some people about the square minis is since they are shaped in a square and not rectangle, sometimes people think that you have to kind of Tetris your items a little bit more in the square mini, really stack things on top of each other instead of being able to lay things out horizontally. So I wanted to mention that just in case that might bother you. Okay, next up I have my mini Fendi Peekaboo in the silver leather with the silver hardware. This bag is beautiful. I had wanted a Fendi Peekaboo for so long and I'm so glad that I got this one. The Fendi Peekaboo does range in price in the United States, pretty much based on the leather, but most of them retail for $3,390. One pro about this bag is I definitely think it, it is a classic. I think that this bag has been around for a while. I think that it's such a classic shape, so I think it will stay relevant for a very, very long time. I love the organization in it because it has one compartment here in the front and then one compartment in the back, so you can really split up your items really nicely in it, and I think that that's great about this bag. One con about this is it is very expensive. This is $3,390, so this is approaching Chanel prices. So for me, I love my Fendi Peekaboo, but I would rather have my Chanel minis. So the fact that this is pretty much almost the same price is really, really hard for me to swallow sometimes, but it is a beautiful bag and I'm so glad I have it in my collection. Okay, next up is my mini Lady Dior in black lambskin and champagne gold hardware. This bag is stunning. I had been looking for a Lady Dior for a long time and I had been going back and forth a lot over the size, over the material, over the hardware, all that. I have a first impressions on this bag so I'll link that down below as well. I haven't been wearing this bag truthfully that much and I really, really want to make sure that I wear it more in 2020 because it is gorgeous and it deserves to be out and about. So that's definitely a goal for me for 2020. But the Lady Dior retails in the United States for $3,500. One pro about this bag is it's definitely Dior's classic bag. Lady Diana made this bag famous and 
it's just been around for so long. I don't see it going anywhere, which is why I wanted to get this. Being a lover of handbags and being a collector, I knew I needed to have a Lady Dior in my collection. And I do not regret this purchase, even though I'm not wearing it that much right now. And I think I'm okay with that because I know how classic this bag is. And even if I didn't wear it much in 2019, it's still gonna be so relevant in 2020. So I know I have many, many years to get wear out of this bag. But one con of this bag is definitely the lambskin. This is my first lambskin bag. And so far, I think it is doing pretty well. I haven't worn it too much, but I have always been very terrified of lambskin, which is probably why all of my Chanel bags are in caviar. So this was um, a hard decision. I had also thought about getting a patent leather version, but I'm glad I went with the lambskin. Um, so I will say one con about that is the handles are definitely delicate. And if you have longer nails, I have, you know, mid-length nails and some people have a lot longer, some people have a lot shorter, but I definitely worry about that and I could see how these could get scratched up. I, I know that that's kind of just part of it and that's kind of a part of having a handbag is it does get wear and tear. So we'll see how I feel about lambskin in about a year. Maybe we'll do an update in a year and see if I'm how I feel about it. But that's definitely a con about this bag. Next up, we have my Gucci Soho Disco, and this is in the rose beige color. And this bag is such a useful bag. I am so glad that I got it. I got this a few years ago, and I love it. I think that the color of this bag is beautiful. I think it's one of those neutral colors that really does go with everything. I think one pro about this bag is definitely the price. It's $1,190 currently in the United States, which I think is great because you're getting a full leather bag here and it's a luxury handbag. So in terms of luxury handbags, that's a really good deal. This and the Saint Laurent Mini Lou camera bag are great prices. And what I love about this is it's a bag that you can wear pretty much every day. It's pretty casual. You can run errands with it. It's definitely a bag that fits a lot in it. Even though it's a mini bag, this bag can fit a ton in it. And it is kind of smushy. It is less structured than some of the other bags like the YSL Mini Lou camera bag. And since it is so flexible and squishy like that, you really can maneuver items in there. You can fit more just because it does give a little bit more. So that's definitely, definitely a pro. And one con about this bag is since it isn't very structured, it does tend to lose its shape over time. Mine is still doing well. I keep mine stuffed when I'm not using it just because I know it is prone to lose its shape and I stuff most of my bags when when I'm not using them. But that is something that I have heard a lot of people talk about, um, just it losing its shape, it caving in a little bit on the sides and just getting a little bit more smushy. And so the lack of structure hasn't really bothered me too much. And I think mine is holding up pretty well, but I wanted to mention it just in case you prefer structured bags. Right. Next up, we have my Louis Vuitton Alma BB, and this is in the Damier Ben print. This is another bag that I really wish that I was getting more use out of and that I really want to try to wear more in 2020. It's such a beautiful bag. I love how structured this bag is. I think it's just adorable. I think it's so cute. I love the Alma because it's so classic. It's one of Louis Vuitton's first bags that they ever produced. Um, so it has been around forever. And I have been seeing a lot of bags in the shape of the Alma lately. I have seen a lot of them, both from luxury fashion houses and from contemporary brands. I've been seeing these a lot lately, and uh, and which really shows how relevant this bag still is. It's been around forever, and I don't see it going anywhere anytime soon. Another thing that I love about this bag is I think that you get a lot for your money with this bag. It retails in the United States for $1,320, which I think is a great price, especially because this bag is very, very structured. It also has a good amount of leather on it. The entire bottom part of here is leather. Of course, the handles, um, of course, the handles and the straps as well, but it does have more leather on it than some of Louis Vuitton's canvas bags. You also get the lock and the key clochette with it, which I think is a great detail. So yeah, I do think that this is good value for money from Louis Vuitton. One con about this bag and something that probably keeps me from wearing it the most, when you wear this bag crossbody, it really does kind of stick out from the side, it doesn't lay flat because it's kind of got this dome-like shape to it. So when it's laying flat against your body like this, you have the whole side here that's kind of just sticking out. So that's something that kind of bothers me a little bit. I do wear this bag crossbody, but I also picked this bag up 
top handle quite a bit, which says a lot because I don't wear most of my bags top handle. And to be honest, I don't ever see myself getting a bag that's just top handle. I am the somebody who like needs a strap or at least needs the option of a strap. So I love that this does give you the option and I do wear it handheld a little bit more than some of my other bags, but this is definitely a goal for 2020. Okay, next up is my Louis Vuitton favorite in the MM size in Damier Ben. And this bag is so great. I know people were worried a couple years ago that they were gonna discontinue this bag, but it seems to still be going strong. I love this bag because I think it's just one of those easy bags to wear. To You can just throw it on with anything. And I think that since it's in the Damier Ben print and it's smaller, you can really dress this up and dress it down, especially if you get another chain strap for this. I use the Felici chain strap on this, which is a gold chain, which I think really dresses up the bag and allows you to wear it in different ways. I think this bag is great for errand running. I love running errands with it, especially because it opens so easily. It just has the magnetic strip here, so it just opens and closes so easily like that. One con about this bag, and I know people have said this in other videos, is that it does, the magnetic strip does leave an indentation here. I know some people have said it hasn't on their bags, but I know a lot of people have had that happen. And I do see that happening on this bag a little bit. It's not bothering me too much, and to be honest, I don't think it will bother me if it gets worse. Since this is in Damier Ben, and since there's so many lines in the pattern of Damier Ben, the crease here does not bother me too much. It just, my eye is not drawn to it because of the pattern of this bag. So it isn't bothering me too much, but I know that that might bother some people, especially if you're not aware that that might happen. So I wanted to point that out. And definitely for me, a pro is how easy it is to get in and out of this bag. I know that that's also a con for some people because I think some people would like their bags to be a little bit more secure, which I totally get because if you're out and about and you're in a busy place and you're brushing up against a lot of people, you wanna know that your bag is secure and that you don't have to worry about it. But this isn't necessarily a bag that I would probably travel with um, just because of the opening. Oh, oh, almost forgot. This retails in the United States for $1,020. Okay. okay, next up is my Celine mini luggage in the black drum leather with the ruthenium hardware. And this bag is so stinking cute. It's so adorable, but I just have not been wearing this bag very often lately. I wore it a lot for a couple years and I just haven't been wearing it that much, which really is unfortunate because it is very, very well crafted. The glazing on it is beautiful. The leather quality is great. The fact that it is in the drum leather makes it super durable. The smooth leather is very, very beautiful in this bag, but it does scratch. Whereas the drum leather, I feel like is pretty much indestructible. I love the fact that even though it's a mini bag, it fits a ton in it. And to be honest, when I wear this bag, I don't ever zip it up. Um, I feel like it's just easier to get my hand in and out. And um, But the fact that it does have a zipper so you can be a little bit more secure with this bag, I think is definitely a pro for it. I, so I think the capacity of this bag and the durability are definitely, definitely pros about it. I think one con about this bag is I really wish that it came with feet. I think feet would have been a great addition to it, even if it had feet like the Givenchy bags which the Givenchy Antigona just has this raised strip of leather on both sides, even that would be nice. But I do think that feet would have been a good addition to this bag. But other than that, this is a beautiful, beautiful bag and I'm not sure why I'm not wearing it very often. I will have to really take a look at that in the next coming months because if I'm not wearing it, I probably should sell it, but I've gotten a lot of love out of this bag so it, it would be really, really hard to see it go. I don't know, let me know your guys' opinion down below. Okay, we're on to my last bag, and that is my second Givenchy Mini Antigona, and then this is in the red pebbled leather. And so I've showed you guys this bag in the past. This is on the chopping block, unfortunately. I will be getting rid of this bag um, and selling it most likely to Fashion File. And I think buying the other mini Antigona in the faux crocodile kind of solidified this guy's fate. I already was thinking about selling it, but now it's definitely going to have to go to a new home. So hopefully to someone who loves this bag and will wear it more than I am wearing it currently. So much love to this bag, but it will have to go. 
but definitely a pro about this bag is again the capacity like i said about the faux crocodile one it just fits so so much in it another pro about this bag is it's definitely a classic shape so i do think it'll stay relevant for longer one con about this bag is definitely the small zipper opening since this is a mini bag the mouth on the closing is a lot smaller so as you can see it does not open that wide and this one i have worn more than my faux crocodile so this is actually opening wider than the faux crocodile one does but your hand may get caught as you reach in some of your items might get caught when you're reaching in once the item is inside there is lots and lots of room but the mouth opening could bother some people so that is definitely definitely a con and the mini antigona in the pebble leather or the smooth leather retails in the United States for $1,790. All right guys, those are my bags ranked from most used to least used.